speak and resolve the situation. I want you to bless the name of the Lord this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you because your word is true, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your spirit. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Father. Amen. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If you are watching this service live this morning, we appreciate you for being part of this service. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning we'll be looking at the finishing faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our last service for today. The finishing faith. Have you ever seen people that started business but they couldn't finish well? Or started a job or a relationship or something, but they weren't able to become good finishers. But well, God wants us to finish well whatever we started. Whatever God instructed you to start, He wants you to finish it well. Whatever instruction that God gave to you, He wants you to be a doer of that instruction. Finishing well begins with a vision to finish. I said, well, I said, finishing well begins with a vision to finish. You know, you started education, you started a class, and you decided that I am going to finish it. It doesn't matter whether you are learning a skill or a job or something, but you made the decision to finish. And when someone has an attitude where he does not finish when he starts something, it's not good on their reputation. Inconsistency can bring a limitation to the possibility of your future. Inconsistency when people are not consistent. And being consistent is the key to unlocking greater possibilities. Being consistent. That someone is known for being consistent. This person is reliable. And it is one of the keys to success. When people can't trust you, people can entrust you with resources. When someone cannot trust you, they can't entrust you with resources. And finishing well should be part of your focus in life. It is not how you start a journey. Starting is important, how we start matters, but finishing is more important. How we start a relationship, how we start something, God wants us to be good finishers. So today we're looking at faith for finishing. Is it possible for someone to start something and halfway they stop, the answer is yes. Is it possible for someone to be passionate about something at the beginning, but later they begin to lose the passion. Later they begin to lose the drive. The, the motivation is not there. The, the passion is not there. They couldn't continue anymore. And suddenly they quit it. It's possible. In Philippians 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. It said, He who has begun a good work in you. That's a very interesting phrase for me. He said, He who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. He's going to help you to finish it. He wants to go a good work in you. So whatever God has started in you, God wants to finish it. God wants to help you to finish it. If you started a project, God wants you to finish the project. You started writing a book, God wants you to finish the book. You started a business, God wants you to profit from that business and succeed in that business. How do I develop a finishing faith? That's the first question I want to resolve this morning. How do I develop a finishing faith? A. Hearing God's word is, a, uh, uh, is crucial to developing a finishing faith. In Romans 10, 17. In Romans 10, 17, he said, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing God's word leads to cultivating a finishing faith, a strong faith. A strong faith hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. It's so important that when you hear God's word, your spirit man is open to receive that word. Because your transformation begins with truth. Your transformation, if you want to be transformed in any area of life, it begins with the truth of God's word made available to you. Your transformation begins with truth. That was why when Paul was writing in Romans 12, verse 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what means the condition of your mind will determine the outcome of your life. The condition of your mind. A, a great life begins with a quality mind. A great life begins with a mind that is consistent with God's word in Philippians 2, verse 5. 
In Philippians 2 verse 5, he said, Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 5, there are those who have this, every situation can discourage them. There are people who are easily discouraged. They are easily discouraged. Maybe they are doing something and they are not getting the kind of result they want to see. They just quit. And unknowing to them that opposition comes to test your vision. Opposition comes. You know, when you make up your mind to make a difference, there are opposition. And a lot of people just wind up, they fall down because of opposition. If you keep quitting because of opposition, you will never achieve success. I said, if you keep quitting because of opposition, you will never achieve success. If you want to develop a finishing faith, you must live a life of obedience. That's number two key. If you want to cultivate a finishing faith, you must live a life of obedience in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans 8, 14, he said, As many that are led by the Spirit of God, it's, they are not pushed around, they are not forced. I often say this to people, God does not force you to do His will. God doesn't force you to do His will, but God can discuss His will with you and leave you with option of choice. It's called option of choice. God doesn't force you to do something. Someone said, God, if it is your will, let this happen. You know, you know those are kind of fleas. You know, God, if it is your will, let me go this way. If it is your will, no, you gotta be led by the Spirit of God. Those are, have you seen some of the prayer and say, God, I want you to speak to me right now. The, the Bible was closed. I want you to speak to me right now. And anywhere I open, God is going to talk to me. Then they open it, it was Jeremiah, a curse. Something that was, has to do with the curse, you know. And they say, that is not the voice of God. But you are trying to do that to yourself. That is not how God speaks to people. You know, when we were young, come back, you used to do those kind of things. God, speak to me. <laughs> because we are not properly trained, you know. You know it, it matters the kind of church you go to. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, and as young Christians, we we'll just open the Bible. Lord, I want you to speak to me right now. Then we'll open it. And if we we'll see what you don't like there, you know, there are places where you have some stuff. <laughs> then we'll close it and say, you didn't speak this time. We'll try it again. That's not how God talks to people. That's not how you want to talk to your friend. That's not how you want to know a person. That's not how it works. If you truly have a relationship with someone, if it's outside this building and he's talking, you can know it was them. Have you ever been in a situation where your son was talking, or your daughter was talking, or your husband was talking, or your brother, or your sister, or somebody you know was outside talking, but you're inside the room. You didn't see the person, but you was talking. How did you get to know? You had a relationship with them, then you knew their voice. Had there also been a situation where someone was talking, you never knew who was talking. Why? You have no relationship with them. <laughs> Wherever you have a relationship is a place you gain understanding. Understanding of communication. Understanding of what they say. So, obedience is another key to developing a finishing faith. If you want to have the faith that finishes, you must live a life of obedience. Don't look for shortcuts to be successful. Don't look for shortcuts to be successful. Don't look for shortcuts to make money. Shortcuts to be. Because shortcuts sometimes produce long journey. Unknown to most people, sometimes they say it's a shortcut, but it's going to produce a long journey for them. But this is why we talk about process to progress. This is why we talk about process in life, that you grow from one point to the other. You grow from one level to the other. If I see someone that I, I've known maybe for three months or for one year, and suddenly they started living a kind of life, and you wonder, where does this guy get all of this money he's using to do all of these things? Suddenly it just broke through. People don't suddenly break through. There is a process to growth. People don't suddenly break through. People don't so, there are people you see that they have been doing one thing for past 20 years. And suddenly started yielding fruits. But you know what happened to most people? They easily get distracted. Then they quit because they are not seeing much result. The finishing faith comes also by the application of God's word. That's principle number three. The finishing phase comes by what? By the application of God's word. The application of God's word. One of the ways that we have faith that will finish is when we begin to apply the word of God. The doers of the word is blessed. 
You started something and God gave you an instruction and God wants you to stay with the instruction. In the midst of the crisis, God wants you to stay with the instruction. You're going through some challenges, but God wants you to stay with the instruction. And a lot of people can just that they got frustrated because they are not seeing quick results. Application of the word may not produce instantly. Sometimes it will be 30 fold, 60 fold, until it gets 100 fold. These are biblical principles. See, so you can prosper and don't be under pressure. Any prosperity that brings pressure to you is not from God. Any money that puts you under pressure is not from God. I'm not talking to someone right now. So true prosperity has process. And God wants to prosper you. We're talking about the finishing faith. The faith that starts something and then finishes. Number four, you must be willing to follow God's will. If you're going to cultivate the finishing faith, you must be willing to follow God's will. The will of God for your life. Have you ever asked yourself this question? What I'm about to do now, is it God that is telling me to do it or I feel like doing it? A lot of people have made decisions without consulting God, then they lost that in life. Then they couldn't get to the top. Now, the will of God should be your ultimate focus in everything you do. Many years ago, I had a, a, an elderly friend, and this friend of mine had traveled to, he traveled a lot to, to different countries of war, and he's an evangelist. So, one day he called me and said, I'd like to travel with you. I'd like us to travel. And there were so many countries he wanted us to travel to. Then I said to him, sorry, sir, I will not be able to travel with you. And he said, why? He wanted me to travel with him. But it was not yet the time. Every opportunity must be evaluated with the knowledge of God's will. Every opportunity must be evaluated with the knowledge of God's will. Because it's not every opportunity that produces acceleration. Some opportunity can cause you to decline. It's not every opportunity. What we must people call an opportunity may be a trap. I define what opportunity is in the first service from God's perspective. An opportunity is when God has spoken to you. <laughs> An opportunity is when God has spoken to you. When God tells you, go left. That is an opportunity. It's not when you decide to go left or when you decide to go left by yourself. An opportunity actually is when God is part of something then invites you. It's an opportunity. When God is part of something then he invites you. It's an opportunity. That is what an opportunity is. God, God was going left. Then he told you, join me, let's go left. There is a harvest in the left. And maybe your friend may come and say, let's go right. And this is why we have to be careful of association. You can be doing what is right, then you have hook up with your wrong friend, then they start influencing you in the wrong direction, then you meet your purpose. I know a guy who was supposed to be alive this morning, who was supposed to be alive right now, but he started keeping relationship with people who ask the question, what are you still doing there? What are you still getting there? What are they still giving you there? And they talked to him until the guy made up his mind and walked away. And one day he was going on the road traveling, he died, going to a location that God never sent him. Can I say this to you? Wrong relationship has the potential to destroy a great future. Wrong relationship. And sometimes a wrong relationship comes with an influence that can limit your possibilities. Or knowing to some people in life, they walked into a place where they will see the opportunity, but because of their inability to see, they were looking with their optical eyes. They were looking with their eyes. Does this place look like a place someone is going to help me? Does this place look like a place? They were looking with their natural eyes, not knowing that they just walked into a world, but they couldn't recognize it. When Isaac wanted to run from the land in Genesis 26, Isaac everybody was packing their bags. Everyone was gone. There was a famine in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaac, so in this land. In the natural, it doesn't make sense. There was a famine. People were leaving the city. People were moving out with their family. And then instruction is coming, so in the land. Let me say this to you. When God wants to move you forward, the most important thing he brings to you will be his word. When God wants to move you forward, many years ago when God called us to ministry, well, I didn't have $50. I didn't have twenty dollars. I didn't. I, I didn't ensure the first value we got for the church work was for twenty thousand naira. It took us many months to raise the money. It took us many months to raise twenty thousand naira. What about it? Twenty thousand naira. It was like ah, 
I was raising like 20 million. You know, I was looking, I was going to this friend, please could you help me? We just got this friend for our church ministry, can you help me? We just got this. I was in the will of God when I saw position. I was in the will of God, but there were, there were situations that could have made me to say, if it was God, why didn't I have the money suddenly? If it was God, why didn't it didn't just break up? You can be in the will of God and you're nailed. Jesus was in the will of God and you're nailing him. A lot of people don't have this idea how these things work. This is why people are jumping. And they don't know that when you're working with God, God has process. The Bible said an Enoch walk with God. He didn't say an Enoch run with God. Some people want to run with God, and God said, let's walk. They say, no, no, I want to run. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is saying, let us walk together. They say, no, 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 no. To walk will be very slow. Imagine God walking with you. You say it's slow. And you want to run. How fast do you think you can run when he's not running? And this is what has happened to so many people in life. God was saying, let's walk together. Let's walk together. They said, no, no, no. God, I want to run. Then they started speeding. They started speeding. Nobody was pursuing them. They are speeding. They are speeding. They are speeding. They speed and speed to Enugu. Speak to Anichan. Speak to Wari. You know, okay, let's do some. Speak to Canada. Speak to Australia. Speak to... They are running from one place to another. They are racing. But God was not in it. Then they came back broke. They came back frustrated. The worst journey to embark on is a journey God never approved. You will lose everything in that journey. Anything. You see, this is why you gotta be careful with your resources, with your life. You don't just do things because everybody's doing it. What is God saying about my life? Huh? I don't use my friend's life to judge my life. I want to know what God is saying about me. This is why I, I don't have so many friends. I don't have so many friends, but the few I have are the ones that who can only discuss the will of God. What is God saying? What is the will of God for your life? So, so many people they have friends who don't even have an idea of what is the will of God. That one is very far from them. He said, What? I don't understand what he said. Will of God? No will of God. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> so when you have friends who tell you to do whatever you want to do, you can pull the whole against yourself. You can pull it against yourself. But when you have a friend who tells you, what is God saying concerning your life right now? Where have God called you to be? God can call you to a place where there is no money. At the beginning stage, there is no money. He called you to that place. He said, there, there is no money. No money was flowing in the place. Unknown to the person, six months later, that money will be coming. Then he stayed in the first three months, no money. He said, how can I be coming to this place, no money? Nobody supported me. No, there is another place that told me there is money. Then he's making decisions based on finances. How many people today are making decisions based on money? Then they got to the place, the person was pulling them again. Ah. I thought, before they will come back to the land where God told them to be, somebody have occupied their space, money has come. Be led by the Spirit. Yeah, led. I said, what? Be led. led by the Spirit. If you're going to have a finishing phase, don't be in a hurry to conclude things. Don't be in a hurry to conclude things. A lot of people are in a hurry to conclude. They draw conclusions so fast. They draw. I was in a particular relationship for many years. There was, in short, I give to the relationship. I was like feeding the relationship. In short, I needed the relationship. The person I was just going to be looking at me. Okay, you're welcome. How are you? I'm the one that will bring seed. I can't talk you now. <laughs> I came with something to so I came with something to give. I never knew I was being studied. Some people don't know that somebody's watching them. The opportunity you're looking for is very close to you. Just that they are watching you, whether they can trust you. <laughs> the opportunity you're looking for is very close to you. It's just that somebody took a seat and is looking at you. He's looking at whether you're going to be consistent for five years. Whether you're consistent for ten years. Then they open up. Some people are not in a hurry to introduce you. Some people are not in a hurry to connect you. Some people are not in a hurry to tell somebody about you. But they are watching you for a period of time. Then they open up. Then they are seeing consistency in character. Consistency in attitude. Consistency in focus. Diligence. Then the doors begin to open up. A lot of people don't know that true success don't just happen because you are smart and intelligent. 
It happened because others got involved in helping your dreams. Others got involved in helping your dream. Others got involved. And God is saying this to us right now. We need to be wise in the things we do. We need to be wise in what God has called us to do. So if you want to develop a vision for it, you must be willing to do things according to God's revealed instructions. That's how your life gets better. You can come into a neighborhood, the whole place is dry, no money, no one is walking there. And the Lord says, stay there. He says, stay there. What am I staying there to do? All my friends are in Jerry. All my friends are where people are passing, seeing them. Why should I stay in that village there? Unknown to you, that in that village you will soon discover a gold there. <laughs> you know, some people walked out of treasure unknown to them because they are in a hurry. If you are in a hurry, you can't walk with God. If you are in a hurry, you cannot walk with God. Abraham waited for Isaac for 25 years. How many of you, your faith can survive the next three years? The next two years. Some people, their faith cannot last for six months. It's a microwave faith. Six months, their faith is winding up. Oh, where is God? Where is God? Where is God? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Six months. They can't stay in faith. Six months. They are tired. Six months. Oh, I'm going through so much. Six months. Abraham believed God. This was a man that heard the voice of God. 25 years. It was the living God for Isaac. 25 years of faith work, 25 years of challenges, 25 years that when it was not permanent, but the man made a decision I'm going to finish well. And there was a, many years ago, and it was time of Olympi, and people were running this marathon race. And the race started, and people were running, and they kept running. And they gave them some time, I think it should be like three to four hours before they will be back. And people started returning after three to four hours to the stadium. They were coming into the stadium, they were coming into the stadium. So they thought all the countries are coming, all the people are coming, so the game was like over. After one hour, they saw a guy running, coming. That is still running the same marathon race. And it was running, coming. And they opened up the stadium, it was running in. And pressmen went to him, why are you still running the game? The game is over, why are you still running? He said, my country did not send me to stop halfway. They sent me to finish. Wow. Wow. They didn't send me to stop halfway. I think I'll share this story with you guys. One day I was trying to go to somewhere with my son. Around town area, I came out at a... A hospital road. As I came out of the hospital road, they, I saw police were stopping people and decided to stop. I don't know why they were stopping us. So there are these guys who are running race, they were just coming in. That, then I thought that these were the guys who came late. That they were just starting the race, they just came late. Oh, sorry, sorry, you lost the race. So after a while, they opened up the road and started going. Then as I was driving, when I saw people who were still running, coming. Uh, as, as I drove forward, I discovered that there were people at government house side that sat down on the floor. That was running the race too. Then I drove up. I, I moved forward. I saw some people they were with their friend in their hand. They were walking, coming. They are still running the race. Then I got to close to the park. I noticed there are people in the bus that they carried them. They, those ones have stopped running. They were no more running. They carried them in the vehicle. The race is still on. Then I moved forward on the road. I saw people tying something with their head. The same race is still on. The people are still on. So, the, so the, the, the vision. It's to finish. Well, what is the vision? To finish. That's the vision. Your vision should be to finish the race, not to just give up. The marriage is going through tough times. Stay small. Be patient with it. Tough time. There is no much money at home. There used to be so much money at home, but right now, what you will have as a family as income is just 70,000 naira a month. So we can't be patient to deal with it. We can't be patient. Oh, this man don't get money again. This one doesn't have money. I'm going home. I'm going. No. This one doesn't have money. I'm going. No, no, no. You learn to endure. You learn to endure some things. You learn to stand with your man. You learn to stand with your wife. The talk time is going on. There is no much money. You knew that at a time there used to be much money. But now there is no much money. But some people will not from morning to night. 
no place in this house. Everywhere is dry. No grocery. No nothing. Everywhere is dry. I'm tired. I'm tired. You know, that's not what to do. When you face difficult time, let your faith speak out. Not your worry. When you face challenging time, that is not when to now. That is not when to say, I'm not going to come to church. I'm not going to hear God's word. In tough time, maintain your faith. In good time, maintain your faith. You know, there's a song in, in, in the good time and the bad time. You are not a God? Huh? No, not. Uh huh? So, in the good time and in the bad time. When it doesn't look like it's working well, keep moving. When it doesn't look like it's going to produce results, keep moving. Many people quitted when they were close to their hearts. Many people labored, 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 labored. They were working so much hard, but when they are close to the season of increase was when they walked away. They were working hard. They were laboring in the ministry. They were laboring. Then the money wasn't coming much. Then things were moving very well. They look at everything. He said, who is going to help me? They never knew that God was going to bring another season into that ministry. A season where things will begin to flow. Things will begin to happen. Then they were going to be at the forefront to benefit. But you know what happened? Inconsistency has robbed many their future. Inconsistency. When people are not consistent. You know how many years I've been doing this? More than 20 years. More than 20 years I have been doing this. More than 20 years I stayed with it. When it doesn't look like it was going to work, when it doesn't look like anything was going to happen, I stayed with it. I stayed with it when people walk away from me. I stayed with it when people try to reject you and make you feel like you look stupid. I stayed with it when nobody cares. Let me say this to you. If your vision worth fighting for, don't quit your time. If your vision worth fighting for, don't quit your time. If your vision worth fighting for, don't quit your time. He said he sustained them for 40 years, they lack nothing. A lot of people are in a hurry to judge their life. They are in a hurry to judge the process. God has a plan. Look at someone say, God has a plan. God has a plan. The finishing phase. I'd like us to look at some scriptures this morning. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews 6 verse 12. There are some key scriptures I want to look at this morning. In Hebrews 6 verse 12. Whatever God called you to do, stay with it. I said what? Stay with it. Those who run from top time can never be great people. Those who run from top time. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Look at this. He said, Hebrews 6, verse 12. He said, When they said that each one of you show the same diligence to the assurance. This is from verse 11. I will take it to verse 12. Let's take it from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. He said, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Until the end. Until what? Until the end. Verse 12 said, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who do faith and patience inherit the promise. Do not be sluggish. Do not be sluggish. Do not be tired. He said, imitate those. Who are you going to imitate? Those who through faith and patience. These are two keywords, not just faith, but patience. Faith that has patience. Yeah. Faith and patience. This is what most people don't have. Most young people don't have faith and patience. They don't have the enduring capacity. They don't know what it means to endure until things begin to happen. They don't know what it means to endure. If it is not sweet right now, they are jumping off the boat. If it's not good right now, oh, it's not good. They are looking for greener pastures. Some people have looked for greener pastures until right now they are having brown pasture. There were brown, there were dark pastures and all kinds of things. You know, somebody can come to this church and we're very nice to them. And maybe they think that maybe ah, we're not even nice to them. A particular fellow used to be around there. And they now went to another church where the pastor was hostile. Then the pastor started dealing with them. Someone was telling me, I said, they think it was me that used to be very quiet. 
The pastor is not only dealing with them, the pastor is trying to divide their marriage. In short, the pastor has taken the man and said, You, the woman, get out. <laughs> You know, when God gives some people a pastor, and the pastor is so quiet and so gentle, he's teaching them the word, ah, this pastor is too big. He's not, not, he's not shouting. You know, you come here, I don't shout on people. We'll just walk very simple and, thank you very much. We'll just walk, we'll just walk very simple and we'll just stay connected with love of people. We'll try to care for people. Some people think that way. No, he's not, he's not aggressive. I need an aggressive pastor. I need a pastor that has fire. Fire, fire, fire. Do you know for 10 years I kept a relationship with my pastor and never gave my house? For 10 years. He didn't show face in my house. He was busy pursuing what God has called him to do. There are people when you meet with them, you're made to trouble. They are pastors. A friend of mine is late right now. He invited the pastor to do an all night for him. And they finished the meeting. Uh, how much was the pastor charging? 10,000. 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> now you met a pastor like us who don't charge you for more things, you know. And the pastor charged him 10,000. And I think he paid 5,000. The wife of the pastor came a few days later. She was pregnant saying he needed the remaining 5,000 that day. <laughs> So, when people see people that teach the world and just love on them, they say, ah, this verse is being too cool. They're too soft. But they don't know that that is how Jesus wants us to be. I don't charge for preaching. If, I, if a church invites me to preach, uh, several years ago I, I, I was invited to preach in a place, they asked me how much are they going to pay me. I look at the man because the man was older than me. I didn't want to create sin there and just maybe shout on him. And I said nothing. I said nothing. If you preach or teach the word of God and you felt like you, you will honor us and say, okay, man of God, thank you for coming. Uh, this for your gas or for your fuel or for just encourage you on the rain. Not we telling you have to pay us one thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars for preaching the gospel. Don't do that. That's not what we'll do it. Praise God. I said, no, we'll do it. Even music ministers, they will invite them. They say, my child is one that I will never invite them. They will never sing here. They will not stop. Those devils, I'll kick them out. They can never enter into the church. There are preachers that will never come this platform. I can keep teaching for the next. 10 hours without you giving this place. Many years ago, God started training for this job. So we teach people who are not teaching because we want to take advantage of them. Someone is to sing a song, a song for uh, maybe 5 minutes or 10 minutes, then he's telling you, my and see my manager. And the manager, will, they, they said, it's 1 million to bring that. And the church is not doing their convention. They, they have to pay the music minister one million naira. What about the person that bridge the world? They now look for 50,000 for him. Since he did not charge them. And if you're doing ministry with money, you will soon have problems. You will soon have problem. Many people start in churches because they are looking for money. Always have problem. Money is not the reason why we do ministry. Money is not the reason why we do ministry. We do ministry to minister to people, to help people. And in turn, most of them may come and say, "Okay, we want to thank God. We appreciate." It's not me telling them you must give me this if I will pray for you. So scripture. So when someone comes to a place like this, you know, someone one time was saying that she had been coming to this church, but she noticed that this church they don't raise money, they don't do things like that, they don't raise money. So, so how do people 
uh, run the church. And sometimes unknown to people, you can't raise enough money to run this ministry. You can't bring our bills that high. The things we do, so we just have to trust God. If we raise some money right now, what is going to happen the next three days time? I don't know really what I'm saying right now. So the psalmist said, the Lord is my what? My shepherd. My shepherd. I shall know what? I shall know what? He said, you learn, you learn to trust God. You learn to do what? You learn to trust God. And when God is your source, you won't run out of focus. You won't run out of strength. When God is your source, don't do anything because of money, especially ministry. Don't. Don't. God has many ways to bring money into your life. He said, follow those who through faith and patience. You know, God rewards people. Eh? God rewards people. And when God begins to reward you, people may think that, wow, this person I used to know him more. But how does it mean? Wow. That's where I saw today. They never knew that God has started rewarding them, that guy. He has been there for more than 15 years doing the same thing. He was consistent. Then God started showing up. He may have not been in a hurry like other people uh, trying to build a big house or trying to do anything. He is just faithfully serving God, waiting for when God will bring the supply, waiting for when God will do the things. And after a few years, you saw them rising. And those are people that rise and their success stays. Have you seen some people, they go up and then they come down? There are many people in this city that started ministry and their ministry went up. Right now, we don't hear their voice anymore. Why are you not hearing their voice? It's not everything that glitters is a goal. That's what you say sometimes. So the faith that finish is a faith that has patience. The faith that finish is a faith that has patience. Sometimes God gives you a pastor who is feeding you with the world, teaching the world, honor it. Be glad for it. Be thankful for it. Be what? Be glad for it. Be thankful for it. Be thankful. If you have not seen a bad pastor before, <laughs> you won't appreciate a good one. <laughs> if you won't appreciate a good one, you appreciate someone who took out his time to bring ministry to you. Did someone hear what I'm saying today? So, the, the faith to finish requires patience. Can someone say patience? Even if you're not seeing the result right now, the result will come. Yeah. Even if you're not seeing the result right now, maybe the result of what you're looking for, the result will come. And how does the result come? The result comes when we walk by faith. The result comes when we walk by faith. When we stay in faith. Learn to believe God even when the situation is not in your favor. Learn to trust God. He said, My sheep will hear my voice and they will not follow. They will follow. He said, The voice of a stranger, they will not watch. They will not follow. My sheep will hear my voice. How many people today are in ministry because they, they want to change the lives of people? How many people are in ministry today because they want to change the lives of people? How many people have the passion? to reach out to others and bring the word to them. Whatever you're doing for God, don't front money. Whatever you're doing for the kingdom, don't front money. Have you seen some people, you never give them something and they will front their faith and they will not be happy or they are taking it for granted or they are not kind enough or they are not good enough. Let me say this to you, God is your source and be kind enough to you. If God is your source, He will be kind enough to you to send you the. He took care of Elijah. If God can take care of Elijah, God can take care of you. If God can take care of Elijah, God can take care of your family. He can take care of your destiny. He can take care of your future. Sometimes you can go to this and deep all the work of God, what God asks you to do. Nobody there recognize you. Nobody there appreciate you. But God has many avenues to come into your life. He has many avenues to come into your life. He has many avenues to help you. He has many avenues to support you. The finishing faith does good. It keeps moving. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Hebrews 10 35. We're talking about the finishing faith. I, I, I will also share things that 
extracts people not getting to that point in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 Hebrews 10 35 said therefore we do not cast away your confidence he said therefore do not cast away your confidence which has a great reward for you have the need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God you may receive the promise you have the need of patience you have a need of what? patience 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 sometimes God can put you in church God doesn't put you in church because the church is perfect God puts you in the church because he wants to perfect you in that church God doesn't put you in the church because the church is perfect there are no perfect church if you find a perfect church don't join Huh? If you go to a church where there is no problem, where people don't talk about people, where people just everybody is just by themselves, they don't gossip, they don't do anything, everybody just come like that, don't join that church. Every two church there will be gossip. You know why? Read the Bible. Jesus, some of his disciples, you know they were talking something. When, when, when Jesus showed up, Thomas was not there and he came in. They were talking to him. He says, not true. If it's true, let him come here. Let me see this. Didn't you read the Bible? Thomas did it was. He didn't care that he had spent three days few months with Jesus. He didn't care that he had spent three years and three months with Jesus. He said he wants to see the fingerprints. He wants to see the nail. He wants to see it. Thomas. He didn't care. He said, I don't care people are telling me that Jesus showed up here. Let's come here, here now. Let's come and show himself. Then Jesus come and was talking to Thomas direct. And said, Let's send it here. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, remember the story about Jesus and Thomas? He said, Blessed is he that believe. Huh? Yes. Blessed is he that believe. I have not seen. That I have not seen. Blessed. Because Thomas never believed. These are the disciples of Jesus. Didn't you see the woman that came and brought his children to Jesus and told Jesus, one should sit on your right hand, one should sit on your left? The politician. She came to Jesus. They didn't care. All the disciples were there. What about their mother? <laughs> All the disciples, they were there. All the apostles were there. These ones, their mother was around and came and met Jesus. Listen, these are my two sons in your ministry. And I'm happy there with you. But well, let one have your right hand, one on your left hand. You know why? The woman wants to be able to, if she speaks, this one will talk to Jesus from this way. <laughs> the woman has made the whole day. Look at people. As even if Jesus speaks to people, we are conniving how they will find their way to the front. Yeah. Read your Bible. So when you see a perfect church, I say, what? Don't join. <laughs> If you join, you finally find that they were not perfect. They have issues. As long as people are there, people will not see. Why is that woman always dying red? Scarps it. Why is it not black? Nobody invited them. They are studied. Someone just passed. That guy, she's not polished. Nobody asked her. She, her job is the job of investigation. The church. In the Bible, you know, there is a monitoring spirit. Uh, and some people, their job is to monitor people. She has worn her clothes to church about five times. She knows their clothes. You know, this is people. This is why when you come to church, mind your business. Get the word. Because there are people among us that keep on running them out. One time I took our church bought equipment, so we it was having an interfering and um, it was an equipment, but it was we're having challenges with it because of the neighbor uh, what people who are using the same facility around. So we called another pastor and one I said let them give it to the pastor. We bought it new. And someone said, Has this pastor come to the level of using this kind of equipment? What's it called? When I heard it, does it happen? Say that nothing. Why do you look down on people because they don't look like you? You know, some 
sometimes unknowing to most people, they, they, they are so proud. Somebody said, braggadocious. <laughs> yes. You know, they, they, they behave. My pastor said, those men of God that feel like they, uh, they behave as if they don't go to the toilet are the, they are the worst liars. No person see can break it up. You know, you know, someone will behave as if they don't use the restroom. You see, they are the biggest liars. Can I say this to you? The face that finish is the face that focus of the will of God. The face that finish. God put you in a place, stay there. Challenges come, stay there. Opposition come, stay there. He puts you there. He has a reason why he puts you there. He has a purpose why he puts you there. But you know what happens to some people? Opposition drives them like a wind. They are everywhere. Every small trouble they are running. Why would you be running from trouble? I used to have a quote many years ago. When you trouble the trouble that troubles you, the trouble that troubles you will stop troubling you. <laughs> yeah. I used to say that to many years ago. <laughs> when you trouble the trouble, Right? This is the trouble though. Now you decided to trouble the trouble. Yeah. The trouble. Trouble every trouble. Mm -hmm. So the faith that finish is not a faith that runs from problems. It's not a faith that runs from trouble. Someone gossip in there, you're angry, I want to leave church. Gossip, small gossip. What about when you're facing a fire? Like, like Sarah Bishop and Ben Bigo. Now when you will renounce Jesus, you will tell them that, no, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. Gossip. Gossip affected your faith. Then you need to be gossip. So we know what affected your faith. Rain. Rain just fell. Their faith was wounded. Their faith. You know, you know when I look at some people and I ask this question. What, what can you face for the kingdom? Go and read Daniel chapter 3. You shall read the book of Daniel. How many of you here, if they catch you praying, they say they want to throw into lions, then you won't change your confession by your faith. Some people will say, God, you know, I've loved you for all these years, but now changing my mind. At least for the 20 years that I served you, I said, people that one. <laughs> uh, for the 20 years I've been with you, be gracious enough to remember that one. Uh, now, I cannot continue. <laughs> they, they, they were called spring. And, and, and they change your mind. Read the Bible. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Does lion look like like cats? Does it look like uh, this chihuahua dog? Have you seen some dog? You know they are stupid dogs. Have you seen some dogs? You know they are reasonable. Some police dogs. I used to like police dogs. Those dogs they use for security check. If they die, it's running, then they lose the dog. The guy will not do like this. No, no, no. The guy will do like this. I think that those, those, I was watching something some few days back. A guy was running, was running from police. He kept running from police. And they got to notice where he was. Then police came to the area. And they saw police running around. Then they released the dog and said, they're running with him. Two of you, anyone who can at all each other should, should win. The guy got and did his sign like that. The dog still went up and held him in his nose. That's where trained dog. Not those dogs that used to. <laughs> it's all my hands. <laughs> oh, 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 my sister was sharing something with me. She said, she had this family and they had this dog in their house. And this dog is very smart. So the visitor came. So when the visitor came, they, were, they, were, they told the dog, go in, go in, go in. The dog went in. So after the visitor left, the man was asleep, the visitor left. So we realized some guys came like thief. I'm Robert, came into the compound. And they were trying to humiliate the owner of the dog. The dog came after them and collected the gun from the guy, the head guy. Those are the kind of dogs we buy. Yeah. Don't be buying those things that, that you don't understand where they are going. 
then he's going to work with somebody that's going to be troublesome, so both of them will clash in power. <laughs> so you know what happened? As long left, God came to Abraham and said, as your eyes can see, so have I came to you. Even including the one Lord to you, you can take all of them. But the guy was a man of peace. He didn't want anything to do with Sodom. Sodom was a past place. Problem was going to break up soon. The people were not right. Then a few months later, Lord was happy, was prospered Sodom. Then the wickedness of Sodom came before God. And when God was going, he took them around and moved to Sodom. He said, God, please have mercy. The same man he took advantage of was praying for him. How do you know powerful people? They pray for their enemies. He was praying, he was interceding for him. But God still entered Sodom. And there was a judgment. Then he told them, nobody should look behind. The wife made so much investment in Sodom. She was going, 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 going. Suddenly she remembered her gold. Ah. She remembered her things. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Ah! Flame caught my house. Everybody was going forward. They didn't come out with anything. All those things they thought they took advantage of Abraham, they lost all. That's what happens to people when they are greedy. They lost all. So the woman couldn't handle it emotionally. Then she thought, thought that God was joking. She became a bit of salt. And when she became a bit of salt, I noticed something. The salt and go to console him. Marriage ended. No, read it. Check your Bible. I'm not telling you so. When the woman became a pillar of salt, Lord didn't talk about honey. Honey what? <laughs> Lord know that the word of God will come to pass. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I didn't know all about the world. <laughs> you know, glory to God. So, Lord, Lord, continue with this. His, his daughters and the son in law. Nobody turned back. Nobody went to say, ah, let's pray for her. Let's recover her. Let, because anybody who turns back will become what? A bill of salt. This is a lesson for you. Some people allow them to go. Don't turn back. If you turn, you become like what happened to them. Ah, uh, yeah. Says, Does anybody get what I'm saying today? When God delivers you, just be going. Don't you what? Be going. Be going. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. If you turn back to recover them, you may end up the way they ended up. So Lord and His family continue. There are people that will be in your their job is to keep distracting you. They distract you with all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. In short, reconciling with some people is reconciling with their problems. The problem will be flooding you. You used to have a free time before, now they have come back. And hey, that's my problem now. That's my situation. So, there are people when they leave you, go and do Thanksgiving. And continue. Don't turn back. Don't do what? Turn back. Because you have more problem than have time to handle. I believe that God is giving you some wisdom today. Yes. I believe God is giving you some insight today. The finishing phase does not look back. Lord, keep going, keep going, because to finish. Rise to your face. If you're watching this broadcast today, oh, let's give God the praise. Let's thank you. Talk to the Lord right now. The finishing phase is a faith that moves forward. I'd like you to pray right now that God will help you. That God will strengthen you. That you are able to finish well. Thank you, Jesus. That you are able to finish well. The finishing faith. The faith that finish. Finisher. I am a finisher. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. If you are watching this service live right now and you have not known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, you're born again and you will never remember the same. God has a great plan for you and you will have a bright future.